Tell me about when you heard about Nolan and uh, thoughts. Uh, so earlier this morning, I had a call from a general manager um, with obviously some sad news. Um, it was a shocker to everybody. Um, I've been coaching a long time, and uh, you don't get these types of kids very often, right? So he was an all-in kind of kid, uh, wanted to be good, wanted to be better himself, and uh, wanted to help his team get better. So I was excited to have the opportunity to coach him as a 16-year-old this year. So. You can see different kids through the system, as I'm sure you've been doing it. So you can see ones that are there for different reasons. But talking to uh, John and that, Nolan's reasons were pure in heart. He wanted to get better, he wanted to do better, he wanted to be better, and everything, again, from what John said, uh, certainly he took it uh, in what everybody said to him, if you can just elaborate. He was all in, that's the only way I can explain it. Um, you could tell he had passion, he listened. When you gave him instructions, when you gave him feedback, he always looked you in the eye. Uh, yes, coach, he understood. Um, he was committed, right? He wanted to be part of a team, and the boys embraced him. So he made a real big impact pretty early. He'd only been around for a couple of weeks. But uh, there's a lot of hurt, upset kids right now, so. How are they doing from what you've seen? Obviously, this is the first time everybody's got together, but I mean, how, you know, what are, what are those feelings that people are going through? Um, I think it's, it's tough. Uh, I know I had about 10 or so in my house today, most of the day, so it was good they could be together uh, and talk about the good times. We shared some stories. There wasn't a lot, but again, because you know, we only know and know for a few weeks through training camp, but uh, I think each of them are, as individuals grieve in their own way. And uh, at this point, you know, we've given them the ability to talk to us and, and reach out. We, uh, we have someone that supports the team on the grief side of things, so um, we just gotta be there for them and help them through the process. How happy, and if you know and if you don't know what that means, but I mean, when Nolan, when Nolan signed, how happy was that kid? Because in the picture, it certainly seemed like that was his life. <laughs> he was ecstatic, uh, as was his dad, Jamie. Um, I had the good fortune of having a conversation with Jamie and, and Nolan prior to signing, uh, when we were all in the room, and. Uh, you know, he thanked us for welcoming him, welcoming Nolan, making him feel part of the team, and um, so uh, he was—he was over the moon. It was what he wanted to do, and he'd already started to integrate into the team. He was in all the group chats, and they were all talking. Uh, both my—I have two sons on the team, and they both were talking with Nolan right up until the time he went out last night. So, even doing that, if—if if, and as I say, maybe it's assuming, but I mean, even doing that, you can see that again. He wanted to get out there, he wanted to better himself, like inline skating or whatever you call it, rollerblading, but I mean, keep working, keep working. So all hours, day and the night, he was out there doing stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, we had a development session yesterday here that he wasn't able to attend because he had been made a commitment with one of his other skills coaches. So that's the type of kid he was. He wasn't going to let people down, right? So he had committed, he went to where his commitment was. And, and that's great. I mean, we, we love that, those things in a kid, right? So, especially kid. Even though you only knew him for a short time, what will you miss? Uh, specifically because I was going to have the opportunity to work very closely with Nolan, being on the defensive side of things. Um, I, I just saw endless opportunity for him. He was that type of kid. Again, I can only say he was all in. He just wanted it. He loves the game. Loved the game. And uh, he was just all in. Tragedy for everybody. Obviously for the family, for the team, for the game of hockey. If you can talk a little bit about that. Like it's just a... It's, it's not one of those things that you ever want to get that call as a parent or as a coach. Um, it's been a tough day for, um, you know, the, the Showers family, obviously. Um, and everybody that no one touched. So, uh, you know, I think we're up to a thousand likes on the post or 1900 something. So, I mean, that just shows the kind of impact a boy like that had. So, he's a good kid, raised by a good family, and uh, that we missed. Last question, forgive me. I've said this before on many things, but uh, nothing really truer than this. Uh, hockey's a game where people fight on the ice, combat, 
But when something like this happens, no matter what side, no matter what jersey you wear, you all come together. It's a big family, and that's what we preach here. We're all brothers, we're all family, and uh, unfortunately last night we lost a member of our family. Tell me when you heard the news. A buddy of mine from Cannington phoned me probably at 8 o'clock, in around this, about 8 o'clock this morning. Um, and he said to me, I guess you've already heard the news, and I, I kind of went, like, what news? Before that, I guess uh, Jamie Showers, Noah's dad, had texted me and I didn't, I hadn't worked on my phone. Jamie uh, had told me that he lost his son. My buddy Mike Norris also told me that Showers' son passed away at 10 o'clock or something like that last night. Who were your thoughts right away? Sorry, Pete. Uh, Don't say sorry, John. I've been friends with Jim Showers for 25 years. I shed a lot of tears. I shed a lot of tears. And, uh, my thoughts went out to Jamie and Michelle, his girls, the whole family. They're just, they're so close. It hurts, it hurts me now to still talk about it. And I've always said, John, that uh, You knew no one for a long time, a day you knew Jamie, things like that? I've known Jamie 25 years, yes. I've always said, before we talk about other stuff, I've always said, uh, as hard as it is, and this may be wrong, but as hard as it is, it's your time now to teach others about Noah. Yes. To tell what he was like, so people know this person who never knew him. So it's, that's why I want to do this, so you can educate me, you can educate us on, uh, who Nolan was and uh, what he meant to what, so let's talk. But what, what, when he came in here, what were your thoughts? And take it from, because I interviewed you over the phone, but what were your thoughts when uh, Jamie talked to you, but you didn't tell anybody because you didn't want... I didn't want anybody knowing where Jamie and I were as a friendship. Uh, I wanted Nolan to come in here and earn his spot. And I spoke with Jamie the whole training camp, but I never said who to him about where our coaching staff thought about Nolan. Um, the second night Nolan was here, he was turning heads. He was what? Sorry? He was turning heads. Oh. He was making our, our coaching staff think that this kid has a shot here. He's a big, right-handed shot defenseman. Eager to learn. And, and with kids nowadays, teenagers, every kid's different. Nolan wanted to learn the game. And with his dad being, having the hockey background that he had, he been taught. We wanted to learn at the junior A level. I knew Tuesday night that Nolan was going to sign with us. We talked about it on Thursday night, and Saturday, Saturday at 3.30 we made it official. We had Nolan sign his contract and everything. I, I don't think even if we would have cut Nolan, he would have stopped smiling. He just the kid always had a smile. And it wore off, it was contagious throughout our whole dressing room. Good kid. Good kid. What was he like as a as a player when you saw him? I was impressed. At 16 years old, he just turned 16 and two. I think he's gonna be a little bit raw. Maybe a little bit raw, but he improved every day that he was here, he improved. If, you, if we had a problem with what if you didn't understand something, he would ask the coaches, he asked the owner, he asked whoever. He wanted to learn, and that's all he wanted to do. He wanted to play hockey, he wanted to get a schooling, and he, and he wanted to be with his family at all times. What does he leave, even though he was here for a short time, what does he leave for this organization? A lot of broken hearts. A lot of broken hearts we from the owner's wife who talked to his dad twice. And Cindy said to me again tonight, she said, I only talked to Jamie Showers twice. He was a family man. He respected everybody in our organization. And I've been known. No one has left a huge hole in our organization for only knowing him and only being here for five days. It's 
after the great events. See the smile on his face. And to see the smile. On his dad's face. Sorry. He earned, he earned everything that happened here. He earned it. It wasn't, it wasn't given to him. Nothing was handed to him. He worked. He worked his butt off. You know, I'm 23. I love you, buddy. We love you. You will be missed, my friend. You will be missed. Sticks out. Fingers sticks out, boys. <laughs>